right, the next passage we're going to look at, Revelation 3. I always love looking at Revelations, guys. I love looking at the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. We'll start at verse 10. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently. So this is a command. People, people that say, you, don't, you know, when Jesus says multiple times, he who endures to the end will be saved. That's a command. That's not a suggestion. If we endure, we will be saved. If we don't endure, we will not be saved. And here it makes it very clear. It is a command. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently. And I'm sure this is Christ's words. I'm almost positive. It doesn't show the red letters here, but we'll look at it in a bit in the Blue Letter Bible and we'll see the context. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of earth. In the next verse, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Oh my goodness. This is in the Bible. Wow. Guys, I love this because I'm learning so much as I do these things. I, I I don't I don't have all the answers by any means. I don't I I don't think I've ever read the Bible from beginning to end. Actually, I I I just need to do that. I've been reading a lot of the New Testament, a lot of the Old Testament, kind of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I've never sat and and read through from beginning to end. That would be so fruitful. I know it, man. I know it. But let me tell you guys, the scriptures are so clear. This is so clear. Man, oh my goodness. Let's, let's, let's see if this is actually Jesus speaking. Because if it is, whew, that's a big deal. Yep, this is Jesus. This is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right here, guys. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, right? These things, he's, this thing, these things says he who has the seven spirits of God. Let me put it in paragraph form. Actually, no, let me put it back. I know your works that you have, you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that you are, that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Oh my gosh. Remember therefore how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Wow. Therefore if you will not watch, essentially if you will not repent, I will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. That sounds like a threat right there, guys. That is a serious ordeal right there. You have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Ooh. People that believe that once you're written in the book of life, it can never be removed. You don't know scripture, my friend. You don't know scripture. Revelation 3 verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. What does common sense tell you when you read that passage? He who overcomes, I will not blot out his name. So just inverse that. Invert that. Make it the opposite. He who does not overcome, I will blot out his name from the book of life. And that's, if you don't want to believe that, that's okay. There's more scriptures that are even more clear. This one is, uh, it's not saying directly that he will blot, blot a name out, but even David himself asked the Lord, he begged the Lord, he pleaded before the Lord to not blot his name out from the book of life. And there's other scriptures that make it very clear. So if you're still holding fast to the idea that once you're written in the name, it can't be erased for whatever reason, either you don't know scripture, my friend, one, two, you're willfully ignoring scripture, or three, you are just, you're deceived. He who has an ear, let him hear. If you guys have ears to hear, hear what I'm saying. No, sorry. Not what I'm saying. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. He's speaking through me right now. These passages are powerful. He is. This is his word. This is Jesus Christ's own words, guys. Amen. Now, the key verse is verse 10. Now, this is still the Lord Jesus Christ speaking, right? He says, now to the this is a different church, the faithful church it's called in Philadelphia. These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. Okay, so this is the Lord Jesus speaking. I know your works. Works. Well, man, Lord, that's... We don't like to talk about works here. We don't like, we don't like to talk about works in the church. Ugh, works are taboo. Not to Jesus, guys. Works are very important to Jesus. So stop believing that works are just ugh, icky. You know, I don't, I don't even know how to put it. It's just the mainstream church has such a weird... Uh, aversion to the whole conversation of works as a whole and it's so such a deception guys these jesus is talking to these churches and saying look i know your works 
They're not perfect yet. You're not worthy yet. Ugh, so serious stuff here, guys. Revelation 3 verse 8. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. This is a big deal. People don't think that, people think, some people believe that you can deny Christ with your words, but believe in your heart and you'll still be okay. Jeez, man, those kind of ideas just, they ache my heart. I have so much fear for the souls of, of professing Christians. I pray to God that he would take them soon. I honestly pray to God that he would take them prematurely so that they would be saved for their own sake, that they would be saved. I'm not exempt of these things, guys. I'm not preaching to you guys. I'm preaching to all of us. Revelation 3, 9. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship your feet before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Verse 10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, to endure. I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Okay, so look at that. That's kind of like what I was saying. Since we have kept his command, if we keep his command to endure, he will also keep us from that trial, that trialing hour. That's what it sounds like. I'm not, a, I'm not very knowledgeable on eschatology, guys. So take what I'm saying as with a grain of salt in this regard. Um, it's not something that I felt that I have felt led to really study, honestly. But from the looks of it, it sounds like he, if we, if we keep the command to persevere, to endure, he will, he will save us. He will, he will. He will keep us from that hour of trial, which is designed and purpose to test those who are on the earth, to test us. All right. That's, that's pretty cool. That's cool. Now, I might not be saying, it might not be saying that in regards to eschatology and the actual like post trip, pre trip stuff. I don't know all that stuff. I'm not into that, honestly, guys, but that's the, the what I'm focusing right now is that he, if we keep his command to persevere, he will keep us, Lord. He will keep us. That's really cool. Verse 11. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. Wow. Wow. Guys, if, if you know, we can debate what the crown symbolizes, it may symbolize salvation, eternal life. It may symbolize a specific reward that we get in heaven via specific things that we endure on this earth. I don't know exactly what it is. All I'm saying is that we need to hold on. We need to endure. We need to hold on to what we have. And now I'm going to apply this as if it is eternal life. I'm going to say that this is eternal life, but it, I'm only saying that I'm only saying I'm applying this to this text now, not to say that it actually is, but if it is eternal life, like Paul says, hold on, keep a firm grasp of your eternal life that God has given you. He tells, he says that to Timothy. Um, if that's what it said, if that's what he's talking about, man, it's consistent. It's consistent with scripture. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have that no one may take it, take your crown. It reminds me of uh, the first ground, the first soil in the parable of the sower, where Jesus um, gives that parable in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And the first ground, the gospel was preached. The word of God was sown. And before these people could even receive it, believe it, and be saved, the enemy came and snatched it away. That's a serious deal, guys. The enemy is alive and active, and he is trying to not only kill us, but man, he is out to remove, kill our souls. He is out to get us, man. He wants to take away the gospel. He wants to take away the eternal life that we have through Jesus Christ. Amen.